All right. How's everybody feeling? Yo. Hello. Bro. Can you hear me, Andrew? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Sweet. Yeah. Yep. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you for being flexible, and uh, uh, we 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 will uh, we will finish finish the job when you have your heart out. Cool. All right, Andrew, if you're ready, I'm gonna count you in. All right, I don't get any video. Is that cool? Or... You're not getting the weird things logo. Oh, I get the logo. I didn't know if we'd. Oh over. no, it's all yet. good. Sorry. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Andrew, three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Oh, goodness. How great to be just here at right on time, because we were here ready, <laughs> and nothing was weird. We're running a little late. Oh, yeah. And uh, we've got... He's not abandoning us. He's not. <laughs> no. It's fine. We wanted Corey anyways. We've got Corey in the house. Yeah. Woo! Hey, everybody. How you doing, Corey? Yeah, good, man. You sound a little, uh, little, little choked up there. A little bit upset. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Corey, were you, able to, were you able to execute on your Litecoin sales this morning after you sent out that press release about Walmart? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But as you know, uh, there was somebody put out a press release saying that Walmart was going to accept of all cryptocurrencies Litecoin, right. and there was a bit of a twenty percent spike in the price of Litecoin, and people were like, "Wait a second, that's hilarious." It would have to be a Walmart coin first. Yeah, probably. Uh, but we do live in a, and I'm glad you're here, Corey, because like this is a crazy era of like speculation and stuff right now, where there are, are more more people willing to try to i think do this sort of stuff because of the way cryptocurrencies work do you think we're going to see more of this oh oh absolutely obviously you're going to see more of it on the smaller coin side that happens like every day on TikTok, right mm -hmm. um some of these bigger coins it's going to be a little bit harder to move uh but i guess today's uh proof that it certainly can be manipulated that's a very good yeah and that's a very good point about like yeah smaller ones like smaller stocks are easier to move much bigger ones a lot harder for that and i guess for stability point if you're worried about that then probably go with a more traditional i'm using air quotes everybody uh, cryptocurrency like a bitcoin or something so the uh, uh what are what are some of the various plays that if you're a smaller coin to you offer i know there are some that that promise to only be you know powered by green technologies versus Bitcoin or, or others that promise that uh, uh, they're backed by the full faith and authority of, you know, China. <laughs> uh, uh, wh what, are, what are some of the various... Well, uh, not anymore, right? Didn't China put the, put the, put the kibosh oh, I, I, on mining? I, I have no idea, yeah. Yeah, there, there was like a, uh, a scam currency out there, like China coin. You'd get like emailed about that, like, I oh, buy China coin, which Dude. was praised upon a very weird... Uh, greed slash paranoia, I think some people have. Oh, you know, if they're sure. taking over the world, might as well, you know. Yeah, there's there's lots of different coins and a lots, lots of different technologies. Right now, it's in such an early phase that there's just a million a million things going on. I think it's going to be probably the next cycle or two, so the next four years, eight years, before things really start to collapse back down into what really works. Like, you know, Google, there was lots of search engines, right? But then kind of Google won out. Uh, so I think it's going to yeah. be similar to that with uh, some of these cryptos is there's going to be lots of growth in lots of different areas, and then they will end up collapsing down into certain buckets or categories. That makes a lot of sense. Like, I, I'll talk to my friends who are young and into crypto, and my friends who have done well that, NFTs, and they think, like, I'm this old man skeptic. And I'm like, no, like, I believe in the long term. I just we're in the crazy period right now where it's just hard to figure out, like, you know, uh, what signal, what's noise. But like, yeah, I think I think we all probably agree. Like, yeah, long term, these things have tremendous potential. It's just this part so hard to tell. Oh, especially right now, towards the end of this particular bull run, it's going to get super crazy over this next handful of months. Just why people need to buy weird coin. Hi. It's art. Yeah. 
Uh, you know what? We're the only weird coin. Uh, the great thing about weird coin, which, by the way, is available at patreon.com slash weird things. It's the only coin where you don't. It's not fungible in any way. You're also not buying anything. It's fantastic. You go to patreon.com slash weird things and you support the show. 100% of your value is protected from the moment you buy it. Absolutely. It's the world's first imaginary coin. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I'll tell you what the benefits are in Imaginary, Brian. You yeah. get early access to the After Things podcast and the satisfaction of being able to uh, uh, know that you're keeping this podcast alive. Satisfast coin. Yeah. <laughs> if you're if you're if you if you if you're satin on your fast coin, <laughs> okay. then you're not getting on the weird coin situation. Landed it. Landed it. Big time, baby. <clears throat> and I mean, crypto is a lot like cryptid. Yes, true. Cryptid coin. Cryptid also, the, crypt, the crypt keeper. We drank with him once. We did once. We drink went with to the World of Keepers. Beers. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. It all comes uh, together. Well, gentlemen, tomorrow is exciting news for the world of uh, regular people in space. By regular people, I mean like a billionaire and you know sure. a childhood cancer survivor and some you know you know another uh, space enthusiast and uh, researcher. But uh, Inspiration Four which is the mission, uh, this was a privately funded mission where uh, Jared Isaacman went to SpaceX, wrote a check, got himself his own dragon capsule to take up and then uh, to raise money for St. Jude's Hospital. Did, uh, it was a kind of a little, a little odd sort of way to sort of do that. Uh, it, it felt a little- uh... This one, yeah, I think, I think uh, it didn't quite get the traction that something that is as uh, monumental as a private trip to space probably should have, right? Yeah, but now it's got a, like a, a multi-part Netflix series. I think they're going to show it live on Netflix tomorrow. I think the intentions were all good, all yeah. all good. But that launch there was just, uh, or the 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 thing was a little like this feels more schemey than it needs to because sounds like it's a really cool, neat endeavor. Yeah. I so so uh, is Netflix doing this live or or? Or they've already done it, and they're going to premiere the story of it on Netflix. I would or... presume it's probably all. It's like one of those, you know, documentaries that are kind of like shot about a current event that are, you know, they they edit it together in a week and then push it, or at least if they've been shooting it for the last several weeks. Yeah, I believe. I uh, my understanding was that they were going to try to do uh, a live, live cover. But wow, I may be mistaken be, on that'd that. That'd be interesting because Netflix has has to this point uh, shied away from that. But I've always assumed it was uh, eventually they were just going to find the right fit of, of of a thing that they would do, and maybe maybe this is that. I mean, certainly these launches are are big enough headline news that it would make sense to drive people to their platform. But at the same time, you know, if Netflix has not done live in the past, then not doing this right would would not be the right uh, the right thing for them. Yeah, I I am confusing because the press release time watch you know join time in Netflix as we bring you the launch of Inspiration Four live, not like a link that you can find. Also, so I I'm a little confused by this, but anyhow, the documentary series is produced by Time and the director of The Last Dance. By the way, that's who's been doing this. Oh, so Jason Hilaire, I believe, is his name. Yeah, uh, so they went all out in that, but that's great. Yeah. Oh, so so the the live stream. Um, the 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 live stream is probably sponsored by Netflix, but maybe not on the Netflix platform. I couldn't tell you because not a lot of information yeah. is available, which yeah. is kind of my frustration with this mission to begin with. Is like it burst out of nowhere, and then you're hearing, "Oh, it's going to be live," and you go to the page. There's like nothing about it. Yeah. Uh, and so um, maybe I'm just saying heresy. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so who's going up? Do we know who's going up? Yeah, uh, the inspiration, uh, Jared Isaacsman. Um, yep. Let me pull up the the crew. Uh, the homepage. Okay, we'll start with that first. So our team, uh, Jared Isaacman, he was an entrepreneur, um, shift four payments, which I'd never heard of before until this came out. Yeah. Uh, we got meet, uh, we got uh, Chris Sombrowski, who was one because he donated money and was one of the winners. And so he's been a big space enthusiast his whole life. And yep. so when this came about, apparently he put you know that in there. Uh, 
Dr. Sian Proctor. Uh, she's an entrepreneur who basically she was one of the people won because she built a business using the Shift for Shop, which was one of the ways you could get that you could that you could get on board, right? Which was one of the things that I mean, look, uh, 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 he he engineered a trip to space for a lot of private citizens. That's a that, that is a feat that either Andrew or I have done. But if we are getting into our Monday morning quarterback positions, that was one of the elements that I think both of us in talking to each other about this were like, that seems a bit odd. Just a bit, bit, bit odd. For the, yeah. For, for, for the narrative of what you want to do. Yeah. And then uh, Haley Arsenault, uh, she's a physician assistant at St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And actually, she was a pediatric cancer survivor. Well, that's that's a heartwarming story. And I guess that's the other thing is that we that we've talked about is that there's the capability to do a lot of really, really, really interesting things with this, like to to tell a lot of really heartwarming kinds of stories. And uh, the more that they're centered, I feel like the more that this becomes this kind of can't miss moment for space exploration. Yeah, absolutely. And I am I am very, very excited for this. They've also done something very cool. They've put a, a cupola on the top of the starship, or excuse me, the space starship on top of the dragon capsule, the crew dragon. Okay. This big glass dome. Oh. Which is not, not gonna like, be amazing. Not like like Nick Cage. Nick Cage isn't gonna be on the top of the dragon capsule. Oh, not a cupola. No. But yeah, cupola. Oh, yes. Cupola. Uh, okay, gotcha. There we go. <laughs> I mean, let's not rule anything out. Let's look. let's He's done weirder things, man. Yeah. He's done weirder <laughs> things. Yeah. So, hey, anything's possible. So it's funny. Somebody mentioned, like, well, why does it have to be wrapped up in gross reality TV nonsense? Well, this is our century. Uh, and I remember a year, years ago, I'd hear people say, like, you know, we should just pay for a Mars mission with reality TV. And I'm like, well, you know, we're going to reality TV, and I can tell you what the budgets are. It'd be, it would take, yeah, it would take a monumental shift in the concept of reality television. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, look, the reason why you want it wrapped in reality television is because this is how we tell the stories. Uh, uh, Bryce has been on this show for the last few weeks talking about how much he now cares about Formula One racing. Not because <laughs> he watched a Formula One race, not because he's ever given a rat's ass about cars, not because he has ever uh, uh, experienced any kind of motorsport or speed uh, of racing attraction situation for one reason and one reason alone. And that is because they made a reality television show so he could understand the narratives and the charm of the sport itself. And if you, if that's what you can do for formula one racing, imagine a thing for which we can uh, show what the benefits of space exploration are. The, the idea of the wonderment of going beyond our, our, our mortal a uh, uh, realm like there's there's a lot i mean if you can tell an amazing story about people who go fast in very expensive cars so billionaires can compete against other billionaires uh this i feel like has uh, uh maybe even more elemental and spiritual kind of through lines this story I mean, has a lack of legs or arms it's like a bullet to the moon to the moon uh, it it, it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say like, yeah. And, and further to your, to your data point there is Ted Lasso soccer. When did we ever care about soccer? Yeah. I mean, and, and, uh, uh, yeah. Ted Lasso season two has also apparently forgotten about soccer to the point where they barely <laughs> mention it anymore. But, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, look, I think that we want windows like, yes, reality television can get kicked around and in many ways, rightfully so, uh, it, in its pecking order of where it sits in like revered narrative uh, entertainment, right? From books to movies to Netflix shows uh, and, 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 and the like, right? Uh, but at the same time, there's no doubt that it is probably among the most populous forms of narrative entertainment that we have. It's by its very nature, an easy access point. And if what we want people to do is understand these, like these moments more than they do now, then I think it's I think it's a great idea. If anything, I yeah. I, I I'm this entire time I, I'm I've I've been with Andrew on the idea that there's no reason why they shouldn't be more front and center. Yeah. So in space exploration, we've had uh, two private companies have had some challenges with launches over the last couple of weeks. Yep. Did we did did we show one of those on here? I'm trying to remember in the last couple of weeks. Um. 
if, you know, if, sort of, if, if you're dancing around uh, some awesome explosion, I, I don't remember seeing one recently. Okay, we've got a couple. And so, uh, actually, let me... Uh, um, the Firefly, uh, Corey, I don't know if you have the power to pull this up, but Firefly Alpha Launch, um, that was on September 2nd. They had what looked like a good launch, but uh, apparently it was not so good launch. Like, I think they, they had some you know issue and they had to explode the rocket, Ooh. which was uh, not fun. And that was uh, Tim Dodd, Everyday Astronaut, was doing the live coverage for that, which I thought was a great, great idea by them because... Yeah. Uh, he's super enthusiastic about space. He knows a ton about uh, space, just an, an amazing resource of that. And I think for a small space company to say, hey, let's have Tim host this, I think it was a really, really, really good idea. Unfortunately, the rocket done blow up, but, uh, you know, this stuff is hard. Yeah. This uh, stuff is uh, absolutely uh, hard. Uh, just as a gentle nudge, Corey, um, the official site for Firefly is probably not going to be featuring their disastrous explosion footage that <laughs> no, we're we, trying to get And that's what to. we're looking at now is is, is, is the Firefly <laughs> rocket. Uh, You're probably going to have to go to YouTube for <laughs> to, to find that. Uh, but but so uh, Firefly, Andrew, what is their 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 mission statement? What 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 are they focusing on uh, uh, out of the gate here? Uh, they're you know they're one of these companies that thinks they can build uh, basically use sort of newer technology to build the rockets to basically uh, get into the idea of how can you how can you lower the cost of manufacturing? I think a big part now is a lot of people are working towards. Uh, eventually reusability, whatever, but, you know, they have their own particular, you know, technology stack. Oh, so gotcha. Going, going, and they're, they're also like, they have a, at some point, they also have emissions of their own space plane, whatever. They've got, you know, a lot of cool ideas. And they're building other things too, like in space utility vehicles for moving things around. Um, and uh, I'm going to find it. Is it relativity space or who was the other one? Uh, uh, re real quick, I want to answer something here in the chat, uh, and I, I I apologize because the names have, have kind of gone too fast, but uh, somebody said uh, space exploration doesn't need a common denominator, a lowest common denominator approach. It certainly did it in 1957, to which I would say to you, sir, you need to understand how little people thought of television in 1957. Like, it was looked literally as the lowest common denominator thing that was rotting the brains of of the masses you know as, as the garbage wasteland as nothing yeah. more than radio but with pictures so and... it, it is it is by our benefit of a nation that has now revered television and understood it to be a prestige a place where where iconic dramas and stories and everything can be told that we now look at it like that but imagine i mean in the in the in the mid 50s where television adoption was largely for uh, uh richer and then eventually middle class households uh and you weren't putting on operas or uh, other refined entertainment. They weren't books that, that people, you know, were, were uh, forced to read and, and had previously spent their time reading or even radio, which kind of had a folksy sort of element to it. Like television was the lowest common denominator then. And now obviously we, we always have our, our, our stigmas on what we put on stuff. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I think that at the point that people, it is from the benefit of hindsight that we look back at the moon landing and say, oh, my God, what an iconic moment. Because thank goodness it was on television. Yes. Yeah, exactly. There's, you know, there's so much precedent for this, too, because it was the television looked at all of it that way. The novel, the novel was considered yep. this cheap, purient sort of way to sort of entertain people was found upon writing. You know, yeah. if it's so important, why do you have to put it down on papyrus? Really? You know, you would remember it. And so, uh, but yeah, reality TV is garbage, but still, it but is. still. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it's cheap to make. And so there's a lot of it made. And so a lot of it sucks. Uh, uh, but also it's like, uh, I don't know. I, I th there's, there's just been so many times that I've seen people get into things recently because of higher higher end reality narrative television uh that i think i don't know uh, if they can do half of as good uh of, of the f1 thing or hell like i mean again it, it's the last dance guy how many people got in to uh, uh 90s basketball <laughs> because oh, yeah. they watched the last mm -hmm. dance uh that otherwise would have no interest in going back and looking at that time period but because that was well done uh it made it, it brought us into a larger world 
And then another launch uh, mishap again, and I'm showing these not to go, ha ha, look at these people. I'm amazed and impressed that these companies are out there trying and, and trying to get stuff done. And they're succeeding in ways, they're building engines, they're getting further. SpaceX had its own journey with mm -hmm. just launch after launch failing. Astra, they were launching from Kodiak. There's a uh, launch facility in Kodiak Island in Alaska where you see this thing just start and then it just goes sideways because one of the thrusters didn't fire. And it's oh. kind of spooky because the rock goes sideways and then it goes up and people are like, oh, yeah, it's going to like, no, that's that's basically it's boiling off enough fuel that it can now go up. It's not going to go or each orbit. Wow. So, yeah, that's another. I sent that link to Corey. There you go. Awesome. Check this out. It's firing. This, yeah. This is Astra. This yep. is Astra. Oh, it dear. Is, oh, dear. Oh, that's daisy. straight off to the side. Oh, no. Oh, no. It looks like it's doing like a like a like like a hand bone side shuffle off, <laughs> off stage. Exit uh, stage left. Uh, huh. That's amazing. And, now, <laughs> and so it's slowly rising, oh, slowly no. rising. It is cresting oh, over the it's, mountain. It's, it's all the more agonizing because it's like you got this almost you could do it vibe happening. But, oh, but, but they can't. Oh, what's going to happen? They're not going to be able to do it. Oh, dear. So what does it conk out or does it explode? Well, I know. I know. Yeah, we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait. It's still going. It's it's going up into the air. And now, like, if you were, we're looking that, down, seeing it, Kodiak, Alaska. Look at yeah. how beautiful that is. It's a. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's a gorgeous uh, visual that the rocket got to have. Uh, Until... And I'll, I'll tell you. The Firefly launch, by the way, there's video of debris falling near spectators. Oh, Ooh, that's not good. Because they were using carb, they were using like lightweight carbon fiber. I guess Brian, you're asking about the tech stack. That's one of the things they're using super lightweight carbon fiber. Yep. And these pieces fell. And you see people running out to go pick up the pieces, oh. not like it's you know, an FAA scene where people have to go and investigate it. Like if you're near a rocket explosion, don't take a souvenir, folks. No, leave that one. Uh, leaving that one to the pros. So this thing, I, I, I could understand now if you were watching this Astro launch, you'd be like, well, it certainly was a, a rough start, but it seems like it's, 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 it's getting there. Cause now it, there's it, a person with it. Yeah. yeah Cause it has now been, been traveling upward for a while. Uh Oh, we're getting a trail. Yeah. There's a person who has their finger on an, a, on a, a button that's supposed to explode it when it goes outside of like the range. And I don't know what they're waiting for there, Yeah. but clearly it did not have enough thrust to reach orbit. And so they may have been waiting for it to get further enough over water. Oh, before they explode it. Yeah. So they don't want it to hit a bear. That's so bonkers. <laughs> I mean, just, just imagine leaning over and you're like, I don't know, Doug, wait, do you want to hit it or should I? Yeah. Uh, now? Do I wait a bit? So this is a doom flight from the second that it does that little shuffle off the launch pad, right? Yeah. 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 Uh -oh. And yeah, the uh -oh. engine out. So now the engine's out. Things are falling apart. Oh my God. Wow. Now it just looks like a music video from the 90s. <laughs> Yeah, here's the the launch camp. I did my part. Don't blame me. <laughs> it's so, a living. So we had Astra that had that mishap. We had Firefly with there again. I hope they keep at it, keep doing it because they're they're doing a lot of things right. And I mean, yeah, I, I can't even imagine the complexity of what's really going on. They're trying to make things happen. And it's exciting to see them. So just nothing but encouragement for them on this. And, yeah. and we watch this stuff. Because clearly it's fascinating to watch this, but also it's impressive. They, they get this, they get it to the launch pad is amazing. I mean, every <laughs> time that there is a launch company for which I am not uh, a, a super familiar with that is trying to launch a rocket into space, I am thankful that we live in the world that we live in. Like that is that is an amazing an amazing sign of of, of humanity clicking. So like that, another news, that, it's like that in new flavors of Gatorade. Like yep. every time a new one pops up, I'm like, oh, what a world we live yep. in. Um, Virgin Galactic, and this didn't get as much attention as maybe it would have warranted. Uh, but uh, Virgin Galactic got his hand slapped because, well, uh, when you send your billionaire uh CEO into space on board your rocket, yeah, and you have the FAA says you are not supposed to deviate from this flight plan if you do. You have to abort the mission, oh. and you decide 
not to abort it, oh. you can get in trouble. Oh. Yeah. How far, how far off are we talking? Like, like what, what, a little 5% slide? Uh, that seems like a, like a little slipperoo, no big deal, right? I don't know. I don't know, uh, but it said that the, uh, the, the, the pilots ignored an entry glide cone warning, which basically means this is the safe zone. You're outside the safe zone. You should not do that. Um, so do we, do we get the sense that this was a virgin trying to get maybe a little bit more of a scenic or picturesque kind of route or, or oh, was it no, no, I think it's right entirely there? like, uh, like, like, uh, they, they've staked too much and they're going to keep on going regardless of like, it's most important that with the whole world's attention on them, they complete everything uh, yeah. and you don't worry about oh, it. Oh, so it was a, 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 a mistake in the middle and they're supposed to abort and there's no way they are aborting. That, with the that's the impression the I got. Is that is that got right, it. Andrew? I, I, version says, oh, this is the misleading characterization and conclusions of the article. This is a New Yorker article talked about it. But it did acknowledge that Spaceship Two did drop below the altitude of the airspace of airspace that is protected for Virgin Galactic missions for a short distance in time. So, why did they keep going? What did they decide to do? You know, I mean, yeah, that sounds pretty close to the scenario. I mean, like, like because because like because the money and the man who is all the money is in the ship and he doesn't want the party That's to stop not going when to, that, when that no. dude says, uh, no, baby, keep on rocking. Then you just keep on rocking. You're going to keep on rocking. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, Cause remember who was going up like a week later. Yeah. Big, big, so. big Basie. Yeah. A couple that's weeks right. later, so. so there may, there, there may be, and I think we'll see, we'll see, we, you know, we're, one, were the were was anybody in danger on board the flight? Number one is the first question. Second, was anybody ever in danger on the ground? You know, if the answer to the first of those is resounding no, then you know you deal with that and handle it appropriately. If it's like, eh, they pushed it, then it's you know it might be a different matter. So, yeah, uh, but that, I mean, I'm getting I'm getting a sense this is this is fine territory. Well, yeah. and, and what's funny is uh, all of these, and you could kind of tell even in the way we're discussing them. We we want to be delicate and supportive, and we're not we're not dancing on the explosions of any rockets no. or whatever. But but just a scant seven years ago, when you know we were celebrating every crash because it's like finally we're we're crashing uh, rockets again, and uh, and it's only because of the success of, uh, of of SpaceX that that it makes us saying like oh don't worry guys it's uh it's fine. Yeah, and I and I think so much credit should be due to SpaceX, which has actually put out their own highlight reel of explosions, of you know saying this is how you do it. Is that you know when it come when it's not people and they they're very different. Their attitude about how they handle things and handle you know carry people on it is a very very different testing procedure. Yeah, it's why it takes a lot. You know they take that that program takes longer, but they're like when it comes to testing just rockets and hardware, they're like get it on launch pad, get up, see what happens, fix it. Because that's the fastest way to develop. This, this, and is, don't... this is this is an expensive game to play, but this is the right way to play it. Like be yeah. public about your failures and uh, uh, understand that you're going to have to explode a lot of stuff before it starts flying right. Yeah, but uh, hats off to all of them, Firefly and Astra. Yeah, keep keep on trucking, folks. Cheers. Yeah, keep on. Uh, 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 just say trucking or chucking. Rock, rock, I like the idea of chucking. Yeah, like, keep, on keep on chucking, chucking rockets into right the sky, into, right into uh, the the heavenly, space. right into God's face. Boom. Got another one coming at you, ah. God. So, uh, some exciting news about Mars. Potentially exciting. Okay. The Perseverance rock samples are finally able to get the sampler working and be able to examine rocks up close to take a look and see what's going on inside of there. Turns out the rocks, in case you're wondering. And then looking closer, it it right now, first look, it appears that they are uh, basalt rocks produced from lava flows. And they're able to date these using crystalline minerals. Ooh. But they think that this it looks like this rock had been in the presence of water for a considerable amount of time. They knew the crater where they're going to had been a lake, but they didn't know how long the lake had been there. You know, was it just 50 years or much longer? But they look at the rocks and they see what may, appears to be a much, much, much longer period of time that these rocks were submerged. 
So the hope for that being that uh, I guess that shapes our uh, investigations to look for past evidence of, of hopefully, fingers crossed, there having been some form of, of life in there at some point? Question mark? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's one of the things they think that if the longer it's there, the, the greater the potential it could be life. Inside there, they, they say there, there are salt minerals, which would be give you inside the salt, they might find evidence of like tiny bubbles of ancient marine water. And potentially in there, there could be even signs of microbial life. Like on Earth, when we look inside of that, we find evidence of, you know, fossils, et cetera. That's so insane. Yeah, we're hoping to return samples to Earth for an in-depth analysis uh, with the European Space Agency in the 2030s. Uh, I, did, I did read uh, an article talking, like, just what a massive success the uh, the helicopter drone has been mm -hmm. like like uh, like uh, they were hoping to get like six flights out of it and now they're 20 something and they're just just using it all the time that's so cool yeah it is an amazing achievement but and i not to not to uh knock the hard work of the engineers and scientists and researchers at nasa and they are amazing but there is that thing of like, oh, we know it's good for 50 launches. Tell them six. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> 12, like, like, oh, like, was it like the, one of the Mars rovers? Like, oh, it's only good for six months. It's good for five years. Tell them six months. Oh, two years later, it's still working. Yeah, it's like somebody, Scotty has, somebody been watching Star Trek. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. yeah. Never tell them how much it's going to take. You know, I it's mean, like. That's I, I guess when when you are in such a high stakes and public relations dependent game like they are in terms of funding, like you do want your your your, your hits to count, uh, because if you have misses, you you want to be able to hide them behind the like, oh, like what an amazing engineering achievement. Yeah, and it is, it absolutely is, but it's just we're kind of too dumb to appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, you know, the whole Scotty, uh, you yeah, know, that whole, that was the quote, like, yeah, if you tell them how long it'll, how are you going to make them think you're a miracle worker? But I imagine there's like some Star Trek scenario where Kirk's like, uh, how long will it take us to get life support systems back on? It's going to be eight hours, Captain, eight hours, no sooner. He's like, all right. And he's like, we have to eject. Exactly. You know, right. he, he, he leans back into his captain's chair and with a heavy heart, just presses the self-destruct button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better this than slow <laughs> suffocation. Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, Lord X Season 2, been loving it a lot. Just throw that out there. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, last night, uh, for the very first time, I got to watch uh, an episode with a, a real-life Klingon, uh, a, a friend of the show, Paul Mattingly, mm -hmm. uh, was a Klingon at Quark's uh, Cafe. And, man, was it, it, he had... He, hadn't watched any of lower decks because he was worried about being disappointed by it but instead it's like every deep cut reference they made he was like hey, hey, hey. it was it was awesome oh it it loves the show and unlike i would say like robot chicken stuff had fun at star wars expense but sometimes like look at how silly this is or whatever i mean it could be kind of fun and that's and then they did star wars detours which never saw the light of air like you know saw light of day which i think people were afraid of you know right yeah. um but Lower Decks loves it, and I think that it's, I would say it's no more silly than the silliest Star Trek The Next Generation episode or Voyager episode. Yep. Uh, uh, totally agreed. It's great. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, I got to bail. I'm going to run. All leave. right. Uh, did you want to do a, a, a quick, quick pick, quick, or, pick. Or, are you, uh, or are you, are you, do you got to get out of here immediately? Uh, no, I will do, uh, my quick pick is Marvel What If. I'm loving Ooh. it. Loving it. Yeah, it, it it keeps being better than I think it's able to maintain. Like I keep thinking, yeah. like, uh, okay, two episodes. That's the, they can't all be that good. Okay, those three episodes. They they can't all be as good as those three. Okay, these four episodes. But that's it. They can't they can't continue to be this good. Uh, yeah, no, I, I totally agree, and I love the fact that it it brings into the MCU kind of canon the flexibility of like everybody being able to show up. Yeah. Like at any yeah. story, it all it all can connect. All right, man. Uh, see you later. Thank you so right. much. As uh, always. One more thing too. Oh, Jeffrey Wright's narration as the Watcher. Great, epic. Yeah. I mean, we, he's he's no Morgan Freeman. He's his own person now, and it's amazing. It's no Charlton Heston. He's Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright doing that that Watcher narration. Exactly. I'm glad you feel that way. I know. <laughs>
Exactly. I've been waiting for somebody to notice. I don't. Waiting I don't care what he's doing. And watching. Is he? Is he? Is he telling me what happens with Spider Man, or is he trying to sell me an IBM server? It just <laughs> uh, whatever it is, I'm in. All right. Uh, all right. Maine is out of here. Let's uh, just go ahead and uh, flow right into picks for you, bro. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, I'll, I'll double down on uh, still making my way through all that Brandon Sanderson stuff. Um, uh, I think it's uh, Oathkeeper or Oathbringer. Which which one am I reading right now, Corey? Uh, bringer. Oathbringer. Um, uh, man, that is a that is a that is a dude. Like I, I keep on joking about how the great thing about Brandon Sa- Sanderson is like. His ability to say, don't worry about it. There's a conceit, and I'm, I'm going to give away a little bit. Yep. Uh, where literally the dude spends two 60-hour-long books unable to remember anything about his former wife. Uh, and when other people say his former wife's name, all he hears is white noise. Just shh. And then third book in... Apparently, it is now time for us to learn who his wife was. Yeah. So now we're like, oh, so anyway, now I'm remembering my wife's name. <laughs> like, it's uh, so good. It's like if 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 he ain't talking about it, you don't need to know about it. That's yeah. that's that's all it is. Uh, uh, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Yep, those books are so good. Uh, I've been uh, uh, going back and forth with a friend of mine, Kevin Ryan, who is a big philosophy guy and uh, also works in the in the political world. And so he is reading and he got me to read along with him the book Anarchy, State and Utopia by Robert Nozick. Have you ever read it? No. Uh, One of the uh, very influential early uh, uh, books about the philosophy that eventually kind of became libertarianism, uh, but uh, makes the the argument from a very, I mean, it is weighty, like to the point where like I, I, I know I almost certainly would not read it in a physical text because I have my, my, my ADD is too strong to, to read anything that dense in, in text, but also like it, I find myself stopping the audio book like periodically to, to make sure that I heard exactly what was being said. Uh, but if uh, uh, you are you are interested in in this political thought and the idea of what is the state and how w- what is the most bare elemental form of a state and what you know could you replicate with uh, uh, you know clubs and stuff like that it is it is it is a weighty uh, a weighty way into it but uh, uh, there's some uh, considering it was written in the I, I believe. Uh, mid to late seventies, some surprisingly prescient and interesting uh, uh, ideas about you know where free will and and our own rights uh, extend, and and also it's it's one of those books that's not a necessarily a a, a polemic like it is it is a very a very thoughtful treatise on its own uh, philosophy. It is building its own case while continually trying to attack it so you can show that it is indeed uh sound but a- anarchy state and utopia uh by robert nozick is what i am reading right now what about you Corey? uh um i would i would love to go on with the brandon sanderson but i think we've we've probably talked about that one enough um i have started the second book of the lies of Locke lamora and uh, red seas under red skies correct. so good it is is indeed so good. I love the I love the first one so much, uh, and I've just I've really just started like the first chapter of the second book, but so far I'm I'm hooked. I just love I just love the way Scott Lynch, the writer, uh, his characters are pretty killer. Yeah, it's uh it's interesting how um, he invests in uh, world building, but then has absolutely no problem with like making almost modern day references. Like uh, each chapter begins with a quote from might be Shakespeare or the Rolling Stones or whatever. Yeah. And and ostensibly this is some other high fantasy world. Uh and the way that people talk to each other, everything's, you know, the the slang is is very M rated, you know, yeah. uh stuff. I, well that I, was I love that it. was like um when uh you know Deadwood 
Yeah, came yeah, out. yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where David it, was, it was practically a, a, a Shakespearean. Yeah, uh, right down to, to having uh, 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 what's his name uh, the 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 Al crazy Swearingen. mayor, oh. uh, the crazy mayor essentially being the chorus. Yes, that walking around talking to himself, delivering the exposition. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was like a very like not period appropriate, but very much brings you in to the world and makes you feel like it should be the way that it the way that it sounded back then, right down to the four letter words. Yeah. Heck yeah. Cool. Uh, all right, friends. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, uh, for listening as always to the Weird Things podcast. I'm going to, as is my tradition, end the show because oh, that's always, always what happens. Yeah. Uh, thank you to you everybody. Say your famous words. Yeah, everybody who has our. Uh, uh, watches us there on, on Twitch.tv. Uh, thank you and uh, apologies for the technical uh, difficulties. Everybody will be back uh, and uh, rocking and rolling the next time that we meet you. But until then, it's been weird. Awesome. And I think... All right, guys, uh, if you're watching live, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, no no after things today. Uh, we're, 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 we're playing Catch as Catch Ken here. Yeah, so, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're going to play a new video game called What's Wrong With This Setup? Yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. Uh, also, the two people that drive after things are Bryce and Andrew, the person with access to the email, and the other guy with access to the email. So, uh, unfortunately, we don't really have a whole lot to, uh, to, to go on right now. But uh, we love you guys, and uh, we will see you soon yeah we'll see you in a bit